Hey there, it's Joseph from RoboFlow. Today, I'm gonna to walk through how to manage your classes for object detection. That's things like handling unbalanced classes, renaming classes, ensuring that you have sufficient representation across your classes, and general class management to improve model performance. Okay, so for today's examples, we have two data sets in mind. Uh, the first is the hard hat sample data set, and the second is the chess pieces data set. Both of these come uh, default in the, uh, on your RoboFlow account when you create a new account, or you can always visit public.roboflow.com and you can find these data sets available for your own download and use. So the chess pieces data set is here and the hard hat one that we're using is a sample. It's just 100 of the uh, larger hard hat sample data set here. Now, what we're gonna talk through today is how to handle the case where you might have over-representation of some classes, or perhaps under-representation of some classes, or classes that need to be renamed. So for example, in the hard hat sample data set, if I look at my class balance, I see that I have an individual that has a helmet, individual that has a head, or some that are labeled as person. And by that I mean, let's have a look at these. So for example, if I pull up the images that are labeled with helmet, you'll see that I have these images where logically the person and wearing a helmet is labeled here. I can see that annotation class right here. Now, if I want to see uh, example images where um, I have just the, uh, for example, just head labeled, I can pull up images like this. And here I see, okay, this, this annotation here, head, seems to refer to someone that's not wearing a hard hat, right? Compared to helmet versus head. Or I can see another one of these images. Here I only have head because no one here has a hard hat on. Or if I go and back to my data set health check and I look at where someone was labeled with person, here I notice I only have very few examples, five total, four in my training set and one in my validation set. And if I look at this data set, I see that person refers to the label around the entirety of an individual. Now I also have helmet in this data set and head because there's someone without a helmet, someone with a helmet and just entire persons labeled. Now, say for example that you're working on a problem and you don't care to have one of the classes that's actually labeled in your data set. How could you drop just this class? Or potentially, for example, maybe you're working and you want to combine two classes or something like this. How do you handle that use case? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Let me show you another example. In the chess pieces data set, we have a number of classes as well. We have the each piece labeled and then respectively with it, whether it was the black or white piece. So for example, black pawn, white pawn, black rook, black knight, white knight, white rook, etc. throughout all this data set. Now, maybe for example, I actually don't want to have my model learn the individual piece. Perhaps I just want my model to learn that there is a piece and I want it to label piece instead of saying white pawn, I just wanted to find piece. I could go in and I could relabel all of my data to just say piece or I could rename the existing labels. Here's how we're gonna do that. So in RoboFlow, on any given pro account, I can add a pre-processing step. And the pre-processing step I'm interested in is modify classes. Now when I go to modify classes, I can always turn on or off a given class, or I can give that class a new name. For example, if I just wanted all these to be named piece, instead of, oops, instead of the actual uh, class that they are, this would mean that the model is just going to find whether there's a piece present or not. I would apply these steps and then I'll leave the other settings the exact same and I can generate a version and I'll just call this piece only. And what this does is it performs all of those pre-processing steps and all of those augmentation steps as we would expect. Uh, but when it gets to the portion of naming individual classes, those individual classes are all merged into one class that is gonna be called piece only. So for example, let's just download this so I can show you what the uh, class names look like. Um, and while that's downloading, I'm gonna pull this up. See, now all of my classes, my unused classes used to be these, but now everything is just labeled piece. I can go to another image and it's just piece across all of my images, piece. So and if I were to download this locally, uh, just as I wanted to do so here, uh, I could pull this up. And inside my images, um, I have only the piece class label. Okay, now let's go back to my other example of hard hat sample. Now in hard hat sample, 
Um, I have one class that's severely underrepresented. This person class here only has nine examples across the entire data set. And as we saw, those nine examples are only in five different images, four in the test or four in the training set, one in the validation set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go and add the same modified classes step, but I'm actually gonna turn off that person step. And I'm gonna apply that in generative version. And then I'm gonna do one example where I don't have it turned off. Um, one example where all of the classes are on. And I've actually already generated both of these. So I have my V1 here of all classes. And then I have my V2 of helmet and head only classes. Okay, so I've already generated these two versions. I then went ahead and just for the sake of example, I trained YOLO V5 on each of these respective examples. So I have YOLO V5 trained on all classes here and then loaded and then done predictions. And here I just labeled on two of the classes. So V2 of helmet and head only was this notebook and V1 of all classes is this notebook. Now this test isn't too rigorous, but even just by checking uh, between these two examples, you'll see that in the case where I have all classes, the MAP is around, you know, roughly 0.5. Um, now it is still going up even just after 100 epics, so I probably should keep training. Uh, and then in the example of where I only have the two classes, you'll see that the MAP gets up to a little over 0 0.5, 0 0.52, 0 0.54 in recent epics. Even more importantly, if we go to the predictions, so here I am in the notebook of only the two classes. In this example here, it does a pretty tough job of finding these, they just think there's heads up here. Uh, but it does a good job of finding helmet here. If I go back to my other notebook that only has, uh, that has all classes, where it's trying to find persons, you'll see that it is predicting persons for this same image. And it's finding phantom people. There's not actually people here. Um, the model certainly could be trained for longer. Now, anecdotally, the model with just two classes where the classes are better represented does a little bit better than the example of where we have all classes and trying to teach the model what a person is from just nine examples, uh, you can see that that is a pretty uh, poor result. So in general, you wanna make sure that you have balanced classes, that is classes that are well represented, and that you can experiment with seeing what individual names of your classes are. Now, because of this, I always recommend that when you label your images, you label with the most specific name possible. So for example, if you have um, the chess piece example, you can always name like Black Queen, Black Queen, or Black Rook, uh, Black Pawn, and then I can always merge those back to just say Black Piece or even just Piece. But if I wanted to make something be more specific, I have to relabel. But if I want to go more general, I can always just by the flip of a switch, relabel the name uh, inside RoboFlow as just a pre-processing step. Okay, so hopefully those are some tips that help you better manage your classes handle balance more effectively, and your ontology management. Um, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment with any other questions you have or videos you'd like to see us produce. Thanks.